In this demonstration, you will see terrestrial point cloud data that has been brought directly into the Geomedia 3D display right alongside the GIS data. This opens up a wealth of new opportunities to utilize the information captured in a point cloud to directly support GIS analysis. My first stop today is Forest City, North Carolina. Here I have terrestrial point cloud data collected for McKinney Road just outside of town. You'll notice that I can distinguish the high-tension wires above the road. This is a great example of the level of detail that can be captured in a point cloud. What's even better is that there may be detail in there that I don't need today, but can come back again at a later date and harvest it, supporting the concept of capturing once and using many times. Here's a teaser for another video in the Geomedia 3D series. We're not just displaying the point cloud. It is available for analytical use. You can see how easy it is to create a view shed from the point cloud data and see the results in real time. For more about this, check out the Geomedia 3D view shed demonstration video. And just to prove that the point cloud data is a first class GIS citizen, meaning that it is just another data type, here's the familiar attribution dialog for the view shed created from it. Same as for my GIS features. I'll kick off navigation around the area to let you appreciate the fully immersive point cloud experience and the level of detail that you get with point cloud data. That's pretty spectacular for GIS, isn't it? Next up, I'm going to make a stop in Summit, Mississippi to take a ride down Route 570, also known as Northwest Avenue. You can see from the point cloud data that there is a highway overpass. That would be difficult to recognize quickly from a 2D GIS view. I also have a lot of flexibility with the point cloud data. Here I'm going to change to using the intensity as my color setting. Color sequences such as this allow us to better control the visual aspect of the point cloud. For example, with some color sequences street furniture will pop out and with others the vegetation will pop out. This particular point cloud data set has been classified using ASPRS last file conventions. Each point in the dataset has been assigned a value for a collection of LAS attributes. LAS attributes can include, but are not limited to, classification, return count, scan direction, and scan angle rank. Using Geomedia 3D, we can filter points on these attributes. We can, for example, filter out data using the classification attribute. Having this information easily accessible is very useful and allows you to dynamically filter which point cloud data you want to display. For example, you may only want to view bare earth points, or you may only want to view vegetation points. In this demonstration, we are going to use the query hexagon point clouds command to gain a better understanding of these attributes. This command allows you to retrieve attribute information from individual points within the hexagon point cloud files that have been displayed in the 3D map window. When the query point cloud tool is toggled on, the cursor appears as a pointer. When the pointer is positioned over the Geomedia map window when the mouse is clicked, a window displaying a matrix of attribute names and associated values for the closest point is displayed. Notice that the first point I queried over the road has a classification of 1, or unclassified, and the second point clicked has a classification of 2, or ground points. Now let's have a look at the lamppost and check its attribution. It has a classification of 5 for building. I can also make the mouse live to dynamically see attribution as I hover over the points. Now let's make use of this information and filter our point cloud using the classification attribute. Let's use the shader configuration to filter on 1, 2, and 3, or unclassified, ground points, and low vegetation. As soon as the OK button is clicked, see how fast the system responds and notice the overpasses have been removed from the view. Filtering like this is important as it allows you to declutter your view and only see points that are of particular interest to you. My last stop is Nashville, Tennessee. I'm on 13th Avenue South, just off Interstate 65, near the airport. Just to reinforce that point clouds are a first class citizen, I will quickly demonstrate how points within the point cloud participate in the shadow casting functionality within Geomedia 3D. Notice how the points making up the power lines actively affect the shadows being cast on the ground. 
Here, I also have existing GIS data, and you'll see the point cloud data right alongside the GIS data in the Geomedia 3D display. Because of this, it is easy to see that the GIS lamppost placement is a little off. I can easily correct this using the GIS vector editing and placement tools already found within the Geomedia desktop. Simply invoke the move command, select the feature that is out of alignment, and then move it to the correct location. Done. You can immerse your audience in any project by navigating around the area to show off the aspects of the 3D representation of the project and capturing the video. There's no better way to help visualize a GIS project. That concludes today's demonstration of how Geomedia 3D with integrated point cloud data can bring your GIS analysis to new heights and new levels of accuracy. Thanks for your time and have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.